نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحان الذي أسرى بعبده صدق الله مولانا العظيم respected elders and their brothers and sisters with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are together here in order to learn something that should benefit us in this world and hereafter Tonight is the night of the Isra and Mi'raj of the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wa Sallam. And uh, Quran Majid mentions uh, more than once, meaning in more than one places in the Quran, about this journey. And the first of those mentions appears at the beginning of Surah Al-Isra. It is also called Surah Bani Israel. It's Surah number 17. And the very first ayah mentions the three phases of the journey of the Prophet Today, we shall have one particular aspect in front of us. We shall not be discussing the journey itself. We shall concentrate on the word Abd that has been used in this ayah. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Subhanalladhi asra bi abdihi. Glorified is the one who took with him his servant took with him at night his servant now this word his servant is the focus of concentration in our today's study because there are a lot of people who do not understand the meaning of abd and when it is applied to different people it has different applications a lot of people and whenever this word comes they believe that whoever can be abd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no matter how many people they are from which category they belong no, they don't differentiate. They say they're all same and equal. And this is very problematic notion. Now, there are, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions uh, in one of his ayat in Quran, which says, In kullu man fi samawati wal ardi. That everything that is in the heavens or it is on the earth, whatever, whatever, everyone and everything. None of those or nothing out of them, those things, has any status except that of a abd, of ar to ar Rahman. Literally, except that it will come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to Rahman, as a servant. Nothing and nobody will come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to ar Rahman, except in the state of abd. 
So whatever we have, we see. That is an abd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this shows that just by being an abd, their status does not become equal. Animals are abd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Trees are abd of Allah. Kullun qad alima tasbiha. Everything knows how to glorify Allah the way Allah created it. So everything worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Holy Prophet mentioned that the sun, it performs prostration to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So everything, inanimate, even inanimate things, soulless things, they all worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They all are servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the first point. The, if the word abd is applied to somebody, it does not make him equal to another person who is also abd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about angels. And it does not mention in absolute manner. It mentions as the word is bal ibadun mukramun. They are ibad and mukramun. They are honored. They are respected servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala differentiates between servants and respected servants. And who respects them? Who gives them honor? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is difference. If two different people are called abd of Allah, they don't have to be equal in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to understand that. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is one thing. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says everybody or everything, it says, Atir Rahmani Abda, it will come to Allah as a servant. But when he mentions some people who are special among them, it does not, Quran does not call them Abd. Quran calls them Abd of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala attributes them to himself relates them to himself. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعِبَادُ Rahman," And the ibad of ar-Rahman, not just ibad, but ibad of ar-Rahman. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, there are two type of, if you, if you have uh, people working for you, some of them you would want to say, He's, he works for me. For some others, you don't want to say that. If you teach, some of the students, they are too brilliant, so brilliant that you say that he's my student. And the others, you don't want to say he's your student. You tell him, don't tell anybody I taught you. So this, this is how, I, uh, there are some, you like to attribute them to yourself, relate yourself with them and relate them to yourself. So, so is the same as the condition of ibad of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So ibad rahman are different. Their station is higher than just ibad. If this much is clear. Then we come to the, and the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the abdihi. It doesn't say he took one servant or one out of his servants. He said, Abdihi, he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took his servant. So over here, servitude had been attributed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Servitude has been proud, proudly connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, proudly related to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the meaning is that Allah took the servant that he is proud of. He takes pride in calling him his own service, servant. That is the meaning. So he is a special servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And same is the case with the word Bashar. A lot of people think if somebody is called Bashar, and this person is also called Bashar, so they are equal. 
and this might be interesting for many of you, that the word Bashar does not literally mean human beings. Always remember that. The word Bashar means skin, outer skin. Bashar is just outer skin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran about hell of fire of hell, it says, Lawahatan lil Bashar. It will burn the Bashar, and that is the skin. So the word Bashar literally means skin. And when somebody is called a Bashar, he is called Bashar because of his outer look. Because of his outer look. For this reason, when Angel Jibreel came to, came to Sayyidah, Maryam radiallahu ta'ala anha, Allah called him Bashar an Sawiyya. Because his outer look was that of Bashar, that of human. So the word Bashar does not mean equality. We need to be clear on that. So what's the difference? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Oh beloved, tell them, I'm a Bashar. Bashar means in my outer form, in my look. Apparent, in my appearance, I'm a Bashar like you are. But there is one difference. Ya Rasulullah, what is that difference? The next word says, Yuha ilayya. Revelation came to me. You can't have a clue of that. I'm connected to the divine. You have no idea of that. So I am Bashar. I am in my appearance. I'm like you. Not in my reality. If you want to know the reality, you can't imagine to receive revelation from Allah. And I receive it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there, are, there is always difference. If this one is clear, then same is the case of those who are beloveds of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who are Allah's beloved. Among believers, among believers, though there are those who are Allah's beloved. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Yuhibbuhum, Allah loves them. Wa yuhibbunahu, and they love Allah. So Allah loves them. So among people, there are ones who are believers. Non-believers, on the day of judgment, in the sight of Allah, in the court of Allah, they are not equal to believers. Among believers, they are those that Allah loves them. So ordinary believers wouldn't be equal to those. And among those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, there are ranks. And above them, at the highest rank, above that, at the highest rank of those who are beloved of Allah, come prophets. And among prophets, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Tilka rusulu fadalna ba'dahum ala ba'd. They are the messengers. We have given superiority to some of them above some of them. So you can see very clearly that there are ranks. All servants of Allah are not equal. The highest rank is that of messengers. And then among messengers, the highest rank among messengers are the Ulul Azm messengers, such as Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, and others of that category. So they are the Ulul Azm Anbiya. Now among those, the highest rank, and that is the rank highest among the whole creation. That is our beloved Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now you look at Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam's story, because he is not among ordinary people. He, he is above ordinary people. He is not among ordinary beloveds of Allah. He is above them. He is not among ordinary, among prophets and messengers. He is at the highest rank. At the highest rank of Allah's creation. He is one of those people. Now look at his story in order to understand the special belovedness Allah has granted his beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam in Surah Qasas, Surah number 28, and Ayat number, we start from 26, it's a long story going on. And Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam had to leave his place where he had lived all his life, and he, has, he had to go somewhere else. And over there, he meets Sayyidina Shu'aib alayhi salam. And Sayyidina Shu'aib alayhi salam says, Inni uridu an unkihaka ihdabna tayyaha tayni. I want to marry one of my girls with you. Ala an ta'jurani thamaniya hijaj. On the condition that you work for me for eight years. You work for me for eight years. If you want to make it 10, that's your choice. So it is 10 years service of Sayyidina Shu'ab alayhi salam. So Sayyidina Shu'ab alayhi salam is also a prophet. And in terms of age and experience, apparent experience, he is senior. And Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam goes and lives with him for 10 years under his supervision, works for him. So that is, in apparent understanding, it is a type of, of staying under supervision and under training. So after 10 years, when of 10 years complete, then فَلَمَّا قَضَى مُوسَى الْأَجَلَ When Musa completed that appointed time, وَسَارَ بِأَهْلِهِ And then he leaves with his family. آنَسَ مِنْ جَانِبِ الطُورِ النَّارَ He saw at the side of Mount of Sinai, the Tura uh, Sina, he sees fire there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have said on his way to here to there, he doesn't say that. Allah says when he completed his time with him, when Musa Asim completed his time with Shaib salam, it means when he completed his training there. So as a result of completion of that training, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed him his light. And what happens there? He finds fire there. And over there, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to him. And in Surah Taha, Surah number 20, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Falamma ataha, when he comes close, he is called, Ya Musa, inni ana rabbuk, I am your Lord. Fakhlana alayk, so take your shoes off. Because you are in a valley that is sanctified. Al-Muqaddas, Al-Wad al-Muqaddas. So this is what happens here. And Surah A'raf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions again that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, now that is, this is one thing. Now he is given prophethood. So he went through some training. And then he went through some troubles with Firan. And at the end of those troubles, when he leaves them and goes where he had to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, could you imagine this training and that hard work together? They enabled him to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah A'raf, ayat number 143, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that. When Musa came to meet us and his Lord spoke to him, he said, Rabbi arini anzur ilayhi. Oh Allah, show me yourself. I want to see you. Allah said, you will never be able to see. But look at the mount. If it stayed where it is, if it stays the way it is, if it remains the way it is, then you will be able to see me. So all this story is one side. You place it on one side. He had to go through training. And that training enabled him to speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he spoke to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he requested 
He requested, I emphasize, he requested, oh Allah, I want to see you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no, you can't see me. You will never see me in this world. This is one story. And then when he goes there, Allah says, take your shoes off. Come without shoes. Because it is a sanctified valley. This is on one side. On the other side, we see our beloved sallallahu ta'ala wasallam. He didn't have to go through that training. He didn't. But he's a human being. There has to be some preparations. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instead does a very different thing, which he has never, never did to anybody. And what did he do? He sent Jibreel. That is for the preparation of meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He sent Jibreel with the lights from paradise. And Jibreel fills the heart of the beloved with those lights. And in one instance, right like that, now he is able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the difference between beloved and very special beloved. Between Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam and over here between Musa alayhi wa You could see the difference between the two. And we mentioned this last time that Allah sent uh, lights and the heart of the beloved sallallahu was filled with that, with those lights. And those lights in heart, why in heart? So the heart, whatever goes in heart, it goes in the body. Now with those lights, his body is capable to take the lights there. To absorb the glory there. To view the continents over there. And to absorb the lights from the being of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not from the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the difference. As the, what is the second difference? Sayyidina Musa a. comes and he requests. And over here Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu is asleep. And Allah sends messenger. Jibreel comes with his messenger, with his message, and he says, Undoubtedly, your Lord, Inna Rabbaka Qadishtaqa ila liqa'i. Your Allah, your Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he expresses his longing to see you. You could clearly see the difference beyond any doubt. Difference between the two different people. And this shows that our beloved Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala is not only the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he is the beloved that there is none like him. There is none like him in the whole creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Walam yudanuhu, Imam Busiri says, nobody comes close to him. Nobody comes close to him. And for in Fadla Rasulillahi Laysa Lahu Haddun Fayuriba Anhu Natakun bi Fami. The superiority, the virtues and the stations of beloved Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala wa sallam are such that nobody who can speak can express them. How could somebody do that? Nobody knows that. Nobody can imagine that. And this journey of the Prophet ﷺ shows exactly that. That he is the special one. And the difference is, I have noted some of them here. For example, the Prophet ﷺ did not have to go for training to anybody. Musa ﷺ had to go through it. This is one difference. Number two. Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala did not go with the request. Musa alayhi went with the request and said, Oh Allah, show me. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was sleeping and he was called. He was invited. Invited at home. Number three, 
with Musa alayhi salam, with all that hard work, it reached up to speech. Allah spoke to him. It could not go beyond that. But with the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, it was one-to-one -one meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number four, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam goes as lover of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam is invited as beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every prophet is lover of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He loves Allah. And every prophet is beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah loves him. But look at the status or the dimension of the personality which dominates with this and which dominates with this. So he goes as the lover of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But our beloved sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa goes as the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number five. Over here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meets him in, on, the, on the planet Earth. And over there, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invites him over beyond the time and space. Beyond the arch of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number six, over here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O Musa, take your shoes off. And over there, the beloved is taken all the way with the whole, full, with all the parts, all the dressing, all the items of dressing on him. Musa alayhi salam is not allowed to take shoes in that valley. And the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa is taken there with his shoes. Keh arsh ya haq zere pai Muhammad. Arsh of Allah is beneath the feet of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Number seven. Over here, the illumination, the glory that has been shown, it is not shown to Musa alayhi salam. It is illuminated on the mount and what is the result that Musa -Islam faints but it is the light of Allah's attributes and over there is the light of his being and Musa -Islam, number eight Musa -Islam fainted it did not appear on Musa -Islam. it appeared on the mount and Musa -Islam was standing beside it and he could not tolerate it he lost his consciousness. But over there, it was the glory of the being himself, itself. And Muhammad وسلم, did not faint. He observed, observed everything that he was supposed to absorb. And he saw everything that he was supposed to see. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. And number nine, that glory appeared on the face of Musa -Islam for a long time. And the story goes that for a long time he had to keep his face covered. Whoever would see that glory in his face would lose his eyesight. But over here, the status is di different. Everything is totally absorbed in and nothing appears. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. So he becomes the manifestation of the glory of the being. And how much that Musa -Islam, who wanted to see the glory of the being, he had to stay there on his way to see that glory that he requested in the face of Muhammad sallallahu So he became the manifest of Allah's glory. And number 10, Sayyidina Musa -Islam, had indirect glory of the attributes attributive light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had it nine times because Musa alayhi wa was standing on his way and he kept sending him back and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came back to Allah nine times could you imagine the difference if there is an imagination possible this is beloved Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala And number 11, over here it was just talk. 
and that talk itself was from behind the veil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to Musa alayhi in the veil of fire. And over here, it was one-to-one -one meeting and God knows whatever speech went on there. Allah only says, فَأَوْحَى إِلَىٰ عَبْدِهِ مَا أَوْحَى He revealed to his servant, his servant, not just servant, his servant, whatever he wanted to reveal. So this is, this is a little bit about the difference between the station of the servants of Allah other than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the station of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This was just to uh, have a, a feeling. Nobody can know the exact station of the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But just to have a feeling, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this great miracle so that we can feel a little bit. So our beloved, we must be proud that our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the most special creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Most beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he holds the station which is highest, highest possible for any creation. And nobody can go near it. Even the prophets like Musa alayhi salam. So where are those who can't even imagine to be like Musa alayhi salam? And they say Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was not some special person. Na'udhu billahi min dhalik. We should seek Allah's refuge from such notion. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us proper understanding and following. Wa ma'alayna illa